Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the second video of Exchange Hybrid Deployment Series. In the last video, we discussed what is Exchange Hybrid Deployment. We discussed types of Exchange Hybrid Deployments that are available. What features are available with different type of Exchange Hybrid Deployments? And we discussed the difference between classic and modern hybrid deployment. In this particular video, I will be discussing what is Hybrid Configuration Wizard or HCW. First, I will be discussing all the steps that we see while running Hybrid Configuration Wizard. And then I will be explaining what Hybrid Configuration Wizard does in the background, what commands it initiates and what changes are made in on-premise and in Exchange Online when we run HCW. Hybrid Configuration Wizard or HCW is a tool that helps administrators to create and configure Exchange Hybrid deployment. When two different organizations want to feel a seamless look of a single organization, Hybrid Configuration Wizard helps to achieve this. Before you run Hybrid Configuration Wizard, you need to meet certain prerequisites. And once these prerequisites are met, you are ready to run Hybrid Configuration Wizard. We can download Hybrid Configuration Wizard from multiple ways. If you are using Exchange Server 2013, 16 or 19, you can download the latest version of Hybrid Configuration Wizard from on-premise Exchange Admin Center. Or you can simply type this URL in Internet Explorer and you can download Hybrid Configuration Wizard. When you will launch HCW, you will see this home page. On the next screen, Hybrid Configuration Wizard will either automatically search for the right Exchange Server, or you can manually specify the Exchange Server name. If you are using Exchange Server 2010 or 2013, this must point to the Exchange Server that has Client Access Server role installed. And on the section where it says my Office 365 organization is hosted by, select Office 365 worldwide. On the next screen, you will be asked to enter your on-premise admin credentials and administrator credentials for Office 365 tenant. Once you have entered credentials for on-premise and Office 365 admin accounts, HCW will try to log in each server to validate if the credentials are valid. On the next page, and select if you want to configure minimal hybrid or full hybrid deployment. If you want to configure hybrid for only mailbox move, you can select minimal hybrid. And if you want all the features of hybrid, you can select full hybrid configuration. For this demo, I have selected full hybrid configuration. On the next screen, HCW will ask you how the connection between Exchange Online and on-premise Exchange should be established. If you want to configure your cache and mail server for the mail transport, or it should be handled by the Edge Transport server. On the next section, you can select if you want to enable centralized mail flow in your environment. On the next screen, you need to choose an on-premise exchange server that will be responsible to receive emails that are sent from Office 365. This server should have an SMTP certificate on port 25 and port 25 should be open on your firewall. On the next page, HCW will ask you on which on-premise exchange server you want to create a send connector. On the next screen, HCW will ask you to identify the transport certificate between on-premise exchange and exchange online. This certificate will be used to ensure a secure communication between on-premise and exchange online. In the next step, HCW will ask you to enter the fully qualified domain name for your on-premise organization. This FQDN will be resolved to the public IP address and it will enable mails to be routed to the on-premise exchange. When you click next on this screen, 
HCW will connect Office 365 to on-premise exchange to configure a single organization. If everything is passed and you do not come across any error, you will see this window. Now, this is the process that we see on screen when we run hybrid configuration wizard. Now let's understand what happens in the backend when you run HCW or hybrid configuration wizard. The first step of HCW is it validates if it is possible to connect with Exchange Server and Exchange Online. To validate this, HCW runs get hyphen Exchange Server command in on premise, and then it tries to connect to Exchange Online authorizing the connection. Then HCW collects data about on-premise exchange organization from local Active Directory. To collect this information, HCW executes a series of PowerShell commands like get-mailbox database, get-organization config, get-hybrid configuration in case if hybrid is already configured, it runs get-accepted domain to collect information about the domains that are added within the on-premise exchange organization. It runs get-federation trust, get-web services virtual directory, and get-remote domain. So it collects the entire information of on-premise exchange organization. Then hybrid configuration wizard collects exchange online configuration for your Office 365 tenant. It executes few commands in exchange online to retrieve this information. The commands are get iPhone organization config, get iPhone on premise organization, get iPhone accepted domain and get iPhone migration endpoint. If Federation trust between on-premise exchange organization and Microsoft Federation Gateway is not created already, then HCW will give you a prompt and will ask you to enable Federation trust. A Federation trust creates a trust relationship between two different organizations. When you sign up for Office 365 tenant, a Federation trust is automatically created with Microsoft Federation Gateway. But for on-premise exchange organization, either you can create this trust manually or HCW will create this federation trust automatically. When this federation trust between on-premise and Microsoft Federation Gateway is created, a self-signed certificate is stored on on-premise exchange server. And that can be verified by running get-exchange certificate pipe FL command. The fifth step that HCW performs, it creates hybrid configuration object in local Active Directory. To create these objects, HCW executes new hyphen hybrid configuration and set hyphen hybrid configuration commands. We can verify this configuration by running get hyphen hybrid configuration pipe FL in on premise exchange server. The next step that HCW performs it adds username at domain.mail.onmicrosoft.com in email address policy in on-premise exchange. Then it adds domain.mail.onmicrosoft.com and domain.onmicrosoft.com domains in remote domains. And it adds domain.mail.onmicrosoft.com domain in accepted domains. To configure these settings, HCW executes set hyphen email address policy, update hyphen email address policy, new hyphen remote domain, set hyphen remote domain, and new hyphen accepted domain commands. The next step that HCW performs, it creates organization relationships between on premise exchange and exchange online. If you are running full hybrid deployment, then it creates one organization relationship in on premise that will point to exchange online. And the second organization relationship is created in exchange online that will point to on premise exchange server. HCW executes set hyphen federated organization identifier, new hyphen organization relationship, 
set hyphen organization relationship to enable mailbox move and free busy and it runs add hyphen availability address space command to create availability address space objects that are used to share free busy data across exchange organizations to verify this configuration you can run get hyphen organization relationship pipe fl in on premise and in exchange online the next step that hcw performs it checks if mailflow connectors are already created if not it creates mailflow connectors in on premise and in exchange online if you select centralized mailflow while running hcw in that case it creates two connectors in exchange online it creates an inbound connector that identifies the on premise organization by the name specified within the tls certificate and it creates an outbound connector that routes all emails to the smart host that is your on premise exchange server then hcw creates a send connector in on premise exchange organization that will point to mail.onmicrosoft.com and it modifies the receive connector to accept tls communication and the commands that hcw executes for this operation are new hyphen send connector and set hyphen receive connector in on premise exchange and new hyphen inbound connector and new hyphen outbound connector in exchange online then hcw enables oauth authentication between on premise exchange and exchange online it executes get hyphen auth config to check if this is already enabled it runs get hyphen exchange certificate new hyphen auth server to create an authorization server object in microsoft exchange it runs get hyphen partner application to fetch configuration of exchange online and then runs set hyphen partner application to configure the settings we can verify oauth configuration with the help of test hyphen oauth connectivity command we can run this command in on premise and in exchange online to verify the configuration then hcw enables mrs proxy on on premise exchange server so that mailbox migration can be performed by running get hyphen web services virtual directory command we can verify if mrs proxy is enabled or not and in the last step hcw runs set hyphen on premises organization command and it completes the hybrid installation if you want to analyze hybrid configuration logs you can collect them from this location from the hybrid server and you can analyze those logs in the next video i will be discussing what is centralized mail flow in exchange hybrid deployment i will be discussing five used case scenarios of exchange hybrid mail flow first scenario will be where mx record is pointing to eop and centralized mail flow is enabled second scenario will be mx record is pointing to eop and centralized mail flow is disabled third scenario that i will be discussing is what will be the mail flow when mx record is pointing to on premise fourth scenario will be how outbound emails will be routed to internet when centralized mail flow is enabled and the fifth scenario will be the email flow of outbound emails when centralized mail flow is disabled so if you have learned something new from this particular video please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel thank you guys thank you for your time take care